Hello everyone, this video is not going to be me ranting about the software industry, I'm going to be talking about software design again. Today we're going to talk about the single responsibility principle, which is perhaps one of the most important software design principles that are going to make your code bases more maintainable. A couple of months ago I started making a series of videos about software design and I think that this is an important uh, idea that we need to cover. This is one of the things that you have undeniably heard. Like people will always tell you things need to do one thing, a function needs to have one responsibility, a class needs to encapsulate one type of logic, a component needs to be responsible for one uh, widget on the screen because when one piece of code is trying to do too many things this is a recipe for confusion and this makes it harder to maintain harder to understand and harder to extend in the future and while nowadays it's a lot easier to uh, reason about code because we have LLMs and they can help us understand what is happening better uh, at the end of the day, it's your name that's going to be on the commit. It's your name that's going to be on the pull request. And you are the person who's going to get woken up at 3 a.m. to fix something. So you need to be able to understand what the code is doing. But when I was starting out in my first years in the industry, like I kept hearing this mantra about responsibilities and how like code should have a single responsibility. But I couldn't really understand what this me what this meant, because like what exactly is a responsibility? Like, is this about functional length? Is this about uh, like conditional statements? Like more experienced engineers had like an intuition about these things, but it was hard for me to to define like a set of rules or a set of principles that I could follow. So today I'm going to try to do that. You know, sometimes this is easy. Sometimes it's obvious. Like if you have a function that's uh, like mapping over a data structure and doing some uh, manipulations over this data, uh, this is relatively straightforward. Like this is one encapsulated unit of logic. Uh, and this function has a single responsibility. But in real life, like we have some of these simple functions sprinkled through our code base, but they are like a small part of it. Like real life and real, uh, real software is a lot more complex than that. Like most of the time, you, like the operation that you're going to do is not just get, a, get like a, a, an array from somewhere and do something with it and, and, and pass it back. You're going to have to like retrieve data, map over this data, filter it based on something else and then like send an email with uh, like make a report and send it, uh, send it via email. And now this function can send you into a philosophical conundrum of how exactly, uh, like how do you define responsibilities here? How do you make this function extensible? Like how do you structure it? Like a very good sign that your function is doing too many things is how you test it. Uh, let's take this function again that I just mentioned, the one that's generating the report that it's fetching data from somewhere, it's doing some manipulations over that data, uh, and then it's sending an email. When you, started, when you start writing tests for this function, you're going to have like logically different tests for it. Like you're gonna have one set of tests that is only going to be uh, like handling, uh, like testing the data, uh, the data fetching portion. Like it's gonna test like the successful data fetching, the like how it handles errors, what it returns when there's an error and things like that. And then you're gonna have like another suite of tests with uh, which are gonna test like the formatting, the different edge cases when you're doing the formatting, what if like specific fields of data are missing in the, like in the response and how it handles that. And then you're gonna have like a set of tests which are testing the final output, like the email that gets returned or like the, uh, that like the HTML for the email or how it like what is like the body that it sends. Tests are a very good signal about the responsibilities of a function. We are talking about one function here, but we are essentially writing three very distinct suites of tests for that function. Uh, and when we catch that, when, when we catch that this is happening, this is a good signal that there is something in this design that has to change. So when we take a look at the test suite, we can identify three different responsibilities. So we are breaking the single responsibility principle here because uh, our function is doing three things instead of one. So instead, it would be better to split this function into three smaller functions that all have a distinct responsibility. Like we're gonna have one function that is only gonna do the data fetching and it can, it can also do like a schema validation over the response that we retrieve, but this is also a part of the data fetching. So it's okay for this to be encapsulated there. Then we're gonna have like the business logic, what we do with this data, like what we, how we, uh, uh, like how we structure it, how we uh, map over it, like how, like what are the default values that, that we fill in if there's like missing values or things like that. 
um, we're going to have this as a separate function. And then we're going to have a final one, which is going to be responsible for how the email gets sent. Like when you're writing the function, at the time when you're writing this code, it's all going to make sense because you have the context about the problem in your head and you know like which are the steps that you need to execute. Okay, I have to get this data, I have to do this with it, and then I have to like present it in the following format. But then if you if someone else has to make a change to that, if you have to open this code base in like six months, it's going to be very difficult to take in the whole problem at once. So uh, we are trying to fragment this problem like into small cohesive units that represent like a, a, a complete logical operation that you can look at in, in, in isolation. Because normally, uh, like in, in a function that has too many responsibilities, you're going, uh, for example, you're going to be using the response object you get from the response in the template of the email. And it's very difficult to reason about how, like, what exactly, what was the shape of this object? Like, what exactly, what are the values there? Why, where exactly do we use it? If it's used throughout, like, throughout the whole function, which is 150, 200 lines long. Uh, but if we encapsulate this logic into small bits, we can take a look at, okay, this function accepts these three parameters. They have uh, this specific structure, uh, and it's doing only and it's doing only a set of operations with them. Uh, and this means that if you have to change the email, uh, like the structure of the email, you don't have to read through 200 lines of unrelated code. You can only go into the function that is related to the email, do the change there, uh, make sure that it's tested, and you can deploy this without having to understand like the whole code base. And this means that someone who is not familiar with your code base can go and make a surgical change somewhere without having to understand everything that you've done. This also helps LLMs reason about your code base because so far the rules that help us help, help them as well. If you have to pass like a smaller context window to them so you, can, so you can use them to make a change, it's gonna be easier for them to propose how exactly you make a change to this code. Uh, but then like one of the things that I didn't understand is, okay, we split this function into three smaller functions, but something has to call them in the end. Like, uh, what happens with the call sites of the functions. Um, and again, you're going to have like a catch-all function, which is going to be called generate report or something like this. And it's going to be calling all the different smaller functions. Uh, but this raises like the philosophical question of whether uh, now we're mixing responsibilities again, because we have one function that is like fetching data, doing like the mapping and uh, like sending an email. Like doesn't this again, um, break the single responsibility principle? And the answer to this is that it actually doesn't because this function is no longer responsible for the details of these operations. It's responsible for orchestrating the data between them. So when you are testing this function, you are not going to be testing each, like, each of these operations separately. You're only going to test the response of each function and how it flows through this orchestration layer that you have now created. So by following this principle, we are you know, we're making our code base a little bit more complex because we increase the number of functions, we increase the number of tests, we increase the number of uh, like um, things that we have to name and things that we have to keep track of, but we are splitting this complexity in, small, in uh, multiple places. Like we are, in, instead of having one big ball of complexity, we now spread it across the, whole, the, uh, across the code base. So when you have to make a change, you only have to take a look at a small part of that code base. Like you don't have to take the whole thing at once every time. And this is like a very basic example and it's sometimes difficult to find applications of it in the real world. But if we take a look at like, um, a React code base. If you have like a big React component and it has like helper functions, utility functions, data fetching happening inside of it, and like multiple, uh, like it has a sidebar, it has like a main section of the screen, it has multiple widgets in there, the same rules apply. When you start testing this component, you're gonna have multiple different suites of tests. Like you're gonna have one test for like the sidebar and how it displays the data. You're gonna have another test that is going to uh, that is going to be testing like the business logic you're going to have tests for like the main section of the page and you see how like the same ideas apply here we have one component that has like too many responsibilities 
Um, and we can easily catch this when we start testing it. Again, the solution here is to break it up into smaller chunks. We take like the logic for the widget. We take the logic, the logic for like the, uh, the main section of the screen. We take the logic for one of the other components. Uh, we put the related functionality and utility functions inside of these components, only in the components where they're used. And slowly this complexity, like even though we're dealing with more components, like in, uh, in, in, in number, this complexity is spread ac across all of them. So when you have to make a change to the sidebar, you only go to the sidebar and you see that it has like it's fetching data here uh, and it's doing this uh, operation with that data uh, and it's displaying it in this way and you don't have to get familiar familiar with how like the rest of the page uh, looks and works and and and, and whatnot uh, and if you have all of this logic in a single component um, you're most likely again reusing objects using one value that gets passed from function to function or uh, maybe you're, you're even relying on closures and it's very difficult to understand exactly what data is getting used when you have everything in a single place. And when you're, when you're making a change to this component, you have to take in the whole thing. And this is like, this is very mentally taxing because when you're maintaining a code base, like it's not like you're doing this once a month to go into like uh, uh, a messy code base and do a change and then forget about it. No, you're doing this multiple times a day, every day. And when you have to go through this mentally taxing exercise, okay, I have to make a change. I have to make a small change to this screen. So I go there and I like, I make the change, but I have to understand how the whole thing works. And then when I'm done with this task, I go and I do the same thing again. Like there's a chance that through in this whole week you introduce a bug there's a chance that you make an error there's a chance that you mess something up because of that and this on, on top of that this takes more time so instead of you figuring out how a hundred lines of code work you have to figure out how a thousand lines of code work and this is just more burdensome if i can summarize this it would be to use tests as like a signal of uh, your responsibilities. When you start, when you see that you're testing too many different things, uh, this is a signal that you maybe need two or three different functions instead of one, or three, or two or three different components, or two or three different classes. You know, I spoke about functions and uh, components here, but this is applicable regardless of whether you're using structs or like objects or like whatever it is. And at some point you start catching this before you get to the testing. Like when you do this uh, exercise two or three times, then you start thinking about this as you write your code. So uh, like people are afraid that ending, ending up with well-structured code is going to take more time. But once you get like an intuition and once you get a taste for like what uh, extensible and maintainable code looks like, you start writing the code this way as you go, like as you're implementing the thing. So you don't have to always like write something and then go and split it and work on it for two more days to make it um, extensible. Um, no, sometimes like when you get used to it, you start recognizing this, these places where you have to split up functions as you, uh, like, as you do it. And then you just do it all at once and you forget about it. And then you have an easy time when you have to go back to this code. This is going to be all for today. Hope you like it. I'm going to continue making like videos like this and cover uh, different aspects of, of software design. Uh, shameless plug, I've also written a few books uh, on this topic. I've written a, uh, books about how to structure React code bases and how to structure Node.js code bases and REST APIs. Uh, and there's going to be a link to them in uh, like the show notes. So yeah, thank you for watching.